for you, everyone. We're back with the latest ASEAN news, and here they are. 40 companies from Daring Australia visit Timor-Leste to strengthen cooperation in various fields. A business and commerce delegation from Australia's Darwin Northern Territory visited Timor-Leste early this month in order to strengthen the cooperation ties in economy, business, industry, tourism, agriculture and fisheries fields. During their visit, the delegation will do the presentation on business opportunities and investment in Timor-Leste to facilitate entrepreneurs' gain knowledge and information. Timor-Leste's Vice Minister of Business and Industry, Domingos López Antunes, said the visit of Darwin's authority to address cooperation in productive sectors and provide knowledge in the area of business to Timorese entrepreneurs on how to improve Timor-Leste's economic sector. I think it's an important day today, since the visiting of Darwin's authority with several companies to Timor-Leste to carry on partnership in productive sectors, especially in the economy, business, industry, tourism, agriculture and fisheries. Australia's Minister for Agribusiness and Fisheries and Minister for Business, Jobs and Training, Paul Kirby, said, Australian government considers Timor-Leste is an important partner that is the visit is all about and there will be a discussion regarding seasonal workers training. A first opportunity after COVID to start to do business delegations to other countries and we thought Timor-Leste was the most important country to come to first. We know that the relationship between Timor-Leste and the Northern Territory over many, many years, over many incidents has been very, very strong and it will continue to be into the future. We have an opportunity to assist Timor-Leste and assist the Northern Territory government. We know that there are lots of jobs in the Northern Territory. We know there are lots of people in Timor-Leste that are able to do those jobs. So we want to get stronger partnerships so that we can have stronger visa relationships so that people can easily come from Timor-Leste, come and get some training and then come and work in the Northern Territory and come and bring that money back to your country to help your people. Dili's head of municipality authority, Guillermina Filomena, said there has been cooperation in the previous area, but there is also necessary to look up the plan for Dili urban area as it needs to be exquisite in the future. Which we had made in 2003. We are in 2022 now. We need to focus on Dili urban planning. Where at the moment, the Minister of Urban Planning team up with Dili municipalities professionals to design the plan for Dili urban area, tourism, as well as business area. Guillermina also adds, the Ministry of Urban Area is developing an urban plan and will be ready in January 2023. The plan can be implemented step by step. Hera, an area located about 17 kilometers from the current capital Dili, has been selected by the Minister of Finance for establishment of the new population area. The Australia's Darwin Northern Territory Business and Commerce team, led by the Ministry for Agribusiness and Fisheries and Minister for Business, Jobs and Training, accompanied by Darwin's Lord Mayor, the Chief Executive Officer of Chamber of Commerce, the team of farmers and its presidents of the association. Indonesia raises fuel prices to control balloon subsidies. Top officials said Indonesia has raised subsidized fuel prices by about 30% as the government moves to rein in ballooning subsidies despite the risk of mass protest. In a televised news conference, Indonesian President Joko Widodo said rising fuel price is the last option in a difficult situation as the budget for subsidies has tripled and will continue to increase. Saat ini, pemerintah harus membuat keputusan dalam now the government has to make a decision in a difficult situation. This is the government's last option, which is to make some changes to reallocate the fuel subsidies so that the prices of several types of subsidized fuels will be adjusted. In addition, Energy Minister Arifin Tasrif said the price of subsidized gasoline was raised to 10,000 rupiah a litre from 7,650 rupiah, while that of subsidized diesel rose to 6,800 rupiah a litre from 5,150 rupiah. Pukul 13.30, pemerintah memutuskan from 2.30 p.m., the price of subsidized gasoline will rise to 10,000 rupiah a litre from 7,650 rupiah. 
while subsidized diesel will increase to 6,800 rupiah a liter from 5,150 rupiah. Dari 5,150 rupiah per liter menjadi 6,800 rupiah per liter. Furthermore, Finance Minister Sri Mulyani Indrawati said more money will be needed despite the fuel price hike with the amount depending on international crude prices. Kita juga akan memantau dampak inflasi. We will also monitor the impact on inflation and economic growth as well as poverty rate following the fuel price hike announcement made by Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources, ASDM. Meanwhile, Chairman Said Iqbal, the opposition Labour Party has arranged a protest involving thousands of workers. Iqbal, who also heads a trade union, told Reuters he called on the parliament to pressure the government to cancel the price hike. Citizens of Phnom Penh celebrate the 150 years of the country's capital establishment. Phnom Penh, officially established by King Norodom as the capital of Cambodia in 1865, is home to more than 2 million people. From a riverside village to French colonial authorities turned into a city in 1870 by building hotels, schools, prisons, barracks, and banks. Once known as the Pearl of the Orient, Phnom Penh became a ghost town when the Khmer Rouge regime, under the leadership of Marxist leader Pol Pot, forced millions of people from the cities to work on communal farms in the countryside. The brutal regime was responsible for the death of an estimated 1.7 million people during their 1975 to 79 rule. Having survived the darkest years of its country's history and its own near destruction, Phnom Penh has become a city full of life once again. Former First Lady of Malaysia, Rosma, sentenced to 10 years in prison for grafting. A Malaysian court sentenced Rosma Mansur, the wife of former Prime Minister Najib Razak, to a decade in prison for seeking and receiving bribes in exchange for government contracts just days after her husband was jailed for corruption. Rosma will also have to pay a fine of 970 million ringgit or 216.45 million dollar, a record amount in Malaysia's history, over three bribery charges, a Kuala Lumpur High Court judge said. Adding that the prosecution proved their case beyond a reasonable doubt, she will remain free on bail depending appeals to high courts. The fine and the jail sentence has been suspended. All right, has been suspended and she is released on her earlier bail imposed by court. So our client, thank God, is able to go back home and be with the family tonight. We will be filing the appeal within the prescribed time, probably by tomorrow. In any event, we have 10 days, we will do it. Uh, the appeal will be the entire judgment on all the three cases. Rosma had pleaded not guilty to the three charges of soliciting and receiving bribes between 2016 and 2017 to help a company secure a 279 million solar power supply project from Najib's government. University students set tires on fire to protest field price hike in Indonesia. Hundreds of Indonesian university students took to the streets and set tires on fire to protest against the government's recent fuel price hike decision. Similar protests were held across the country as students demanded that the fuel price hike be revoked. Indonesia raised subsidized fuel prices by about 30% as the government moved to rein in ballooning subsidies despite the risk of mass protest. Fuel prices are politically sensitive in Indonesia and the changes will have major implications for households and small businesses as subsidized fuel accounts for more than 80% of state-owned oil giant Pertamina sales. The last fuel price hike was made in 2014, months after Jokowi took office, sparking protest across the archipelago. At least one person died and thousands of people displaced after the typhoon in South Korea. South Korea deployed marines and mobilized amphibious vehicles to help with search and rescue efforts after Typhoon Hinamore made landfall in the country's south, leaving thousands of people displayed and one dead.
In the southeastern city of Pohang, one resident was swept away and killed by strong currents during evacuation. The Ministry of Interior and Safety said the typhoon also left one injured and two others missing. Casualty numbers could rise as authorities continue rescue operations. About 2,100 people were still awaiting to be evacuated, mostly in the southern regions. According to the Korea Meteorological Administration, the typhoon left the Korean peninsula at about 7.10 a.m. through waters of the southeastern city of Uslan after landing on the coastal city of Gyoje. Philippines President Marcos meets Singapore Prime Minister Lee as part of an official state visit. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. met Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsiung Loon as part of an official state visit to the city-state. Marcos had arrived a day earlier and met a Filipino community at the National University of Singapore. The trip by Marcos was his second official state visit overseas since his landslide election victory in May and follows a three-day trip to Indonesia. Marcos shared he would deepen bilateral relations, explore options for advancing our economic ties, as well as discuss regional and global issues as part of the visit. He was also scheduled to meet with Singapore President Halima Yaqub. At least 12 people died in karaoke bar after fire. The state media reported that a fire at a karaoke bar in southern Vietnam killed 12 people and injured 40 others, with many in serious condition. Meanwhile, according to the state media VTV, the fire broke out at a bar in Binh Duong province, an industrial production hub near Ho Chi Minh City. Prime Minister Pam Min Chin ordered the Ministry of Public Security and provincial authorities to investigate the cause of the fire. Chin also ordered cities and provinces across the Southeast Asian country to step up safety standards at facilities prone to fire, including karaoke bars. Karaoke is popular in Vietnam but lacks safety standards at venues have raised concerns. Three firefighters were killed in a fire at another karaoke bar in Hanoi last month. And that's the whole news in today's program. We will be back soon with the most updated ones. Stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy your weekdays ahead.